Hi there, welcome to the Witcher Math channel. Today we're going to talk about circle the terms. It's uh, just another way of thinking about order of operations. It's not a whole lot different than uh, PEMDAS, or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, which you may have learned back in grade school, but uh, this is more of a visual representation, and it's got a few differences, and when I'm teaching in the classroom, I think it's a lot more reliable and consistent and less confusing because of that. So let's talk about this. First of all, what is a term? Well, on the simplest level, Jose, please call 5202. Jose, 5202. Yep, we get some interruptions. Anyway, what is a term? It is a piece of an expression or an equation that uh, is separated by addition or subtraction signs. Okay? That's a very simple definition, but it works for us because we're just going to be working with some numbers here. Later on, terms become a little more complicated when we get into algebra and we have variables and things like that. Today, we're just going to deal with numbers. So for our definition, we're just looking for pieces of an equation. If you look at our example up here, actually, this is an expression because there's no equal sign an expression, and the pieces are separated by addition and subtraction signs. So here's a term, here's a term, and here's a term. So for circle the terms to work, first of all, you need to be able to identify a term. Then after that, it's easy. You just circle it. Step one, identify the terms. Step two, circle them. And step three, do the work in the circles. And then you just add and subtract from left to right. Since addition is uh, commutative and all that, order doesn't really matter there. Okay, so there's our four steps. Let's do a couple of problems and check this out. All right. Let's start with the one I already wrote on the page. Why? Well, because I already wrote it on the page. So we've got this 24 divided by 3 plus 7 times the quantity 9 plus 1 minus 4. First, we identify terms. So we're looking for addition and subtraction signs. There's one and there's one. So here's a term. Here's a term. And here's a term. And you might think, hey, Mr. Witcher, what's up? There's a plus sign in there. Shouldn't you circle 7 times 9? Well, the addition sign here is inside parentheses, which means that needs to get done first. So it's part of, it's a term within a term, a nested term, if you want to think of it that way. So there, we identified the terms. We circled them. Do the work in the circles. 24 divided by 3 is 8. <clears throat> uh, 9 plus 1 is 10. And 4 is just 4. We like that. I, mean, I found this orange pen on the floor the other day. I kind of like it. It fits in with the season. Tomorrow's Halloween. But it's timeless. There we go. I'm circling as we go just to show you the process that we're going through. Okay, so I apologize if writing 8 more than once offends you. Or 4 more than once. But it shows all the steps. 7 times 10 is 70. And four, I'm going to circle them one more time. At this point, it's pretty easy to see what our answer is going to be. Got to, I'm going to group those together. 78 minus 4. And then finally, we get 74. Bam. That's our answer. Okay. And just on a side note for vocab, all of these are expressions. There's no equal sign. Okay? Once I put an equal sign at the end, it becomes an equation. But we're dealing with expressions. And what did we do then? We evaluated them or simplified. Okay? When you see words like that on a test, that just means basically figure out the answer. But it also means don't put an equal sign 
And if you're on a multiple choice test, don't choose that answer that has the equal sign because then it's not an expression anymore. Okay, enough about that. Now that you know how to do circle the terms, let's do a couple of samples and uh, call it a day. You can get back to your life. All right. Let's start easy to practice this, okay? Here's uh, 7 plus 3 times 8. <clears throat> Hey, a common mistake people might make here, if you go ahead and do that problem, would be to go 7, whoops, times 7 plus 3, which is 10, and then 10 times 8, and they end up with 80. Okay? That's wrong. Let's apply circle the terms and see what the real answer is. There's the addition sign, so here's a term, and here's a term. You can see the answer is going to be 31, but we're going to go through the steps. We do the work in the circle. Just bringing the circles down just to reinforce this idea. And 7 plus 4 is 31. Yay! Okay. Next. I just thought of something really cool that was going to really help you, but I forgot what it was. So let's do another problem. Maybe it'll come to me. Here's another one. 3 plus 2 times 6 minus 3. Hmm. Here's a mistake. I like to show you the mistakes because we uh, actually learn more from mistakes. If you went 3, 3 plus 2, which is 5, <clears throat> and then you do 5 times 6, which is 30, and then you do 30 minus 3, which is 27. That's wrong! But if this were a multiple choice test, that would be one of your choices, and uh, we want to make sure you know that's wrong, so you don't pick that one. First thing we're going to do, circle terms. Remember, the terms are the pieces of the expression that are separated by addition or subtraction signs. <clears throat> Excuse me. I had some scrambled eggs this morning. Okay. Three, do the work in each circle. Since we're in the learning process here, I'm still uh, using the circles, but you can see what a nice visual it is. It makes it really easy to see what you have left to do. When you're left with just one number inside a circle, you're pretty much done with the circles. We just add them up. There's 3 and 12. Take away the 3, so there's 12 is the right answer there. 12. A couple more? I don't know. We're at the 8-minute mark. We like to keep this less than 10 minutes. Let's do one more. Uh, I'm going to do one with some parentheses in here. How's that? What do you do when you have parentheses and we're doing circle the terms? Well, because there's a term inside the parentheses, but then it's a term within a term. So this whole thing, we have to deal with that whole thing before we can uh, add it to 4. So this is going to take a couple steps. We're going to do the parentheses first. You might recognize that from PEMDAS, right? That's what the P is after all. You're going to do parentheses first. So you can see how these two methods are not totally different from each other. But I sure like the circles. It makes it, I'm a visual learner, and if you're visual, that makes it easy to see. And if you can trust this, then when you get a long, complicated problem later on, uh, it gives you a strategy that you know is going to work, that you can trust. Okay? So we do the work here, and we get 20 on that one. That's how you deal with parentheses. Okay, do the work in there first. And uh, if you have the whole thing in a circle, it just helps you go through the steps and reminds you of what to do. Here, let's do one more and then uh, we'll call it good. What do you say? Times 8 divided by 2. I'm almost out of room. So I should stop. There we go. How do you know when to stop? When you run out of room. Let's circle these. Okay, lots of terms here. But if you circle them, then it's not so complicated. There's a term. There's an addition sign. Over here is a subtraction sign. So 
So I'm going to do that. So I really only have three terms here. Okay. So we have uh, 18 cut in half, which is 9. We have uh, 56 cut in half. And just to show the steps here, I'm going to do that. And then we have, uh, we'll do the work in here first. Carry the circles down. Next step, keep the 9 with 28 and 25. And 9 and 28 is 37. Minus 25, just for fun. Those are still terms. They're still terms. There's two terms. We started with three, now we have two. And uh, that's 12. Okay, something to point out here, right here. You might go, hey, does order matter? Well, let's check this out. If you ever you have a question like that, just go ahead and do it. This is harmless, okay? It's harmless. Let's check the order out. If I multiply first and then divide by 2, what do I get? 28. If I divide 8 by 2 first, 8 divided by 2 is 4, and what do I get? 28. So as you can see, just by experimenting here, the order does not matter. So that's why up here, I went 56 divided by 2. You might have gone 7 times 8 divided by 2. It doesn't matter the order when you have a series of multiplication and division problems in a row because this might be controversial. I hope you're sitting down. There is no division. What? It's all multiplication. But uh, that's a different story for a different day. I don't want to give you nightmares. Ouch. So, back to our cover page. Circle the terms. Give it a shot next time you have an order of operations problem and see how it works for you. I hope you like that and uh, have a great day. Bye.